If you would kind of tell us the backstory about where we're located. This was a former JCI facility that did automotive seats, interiors? Yeah, that's, that's correct and before my time, but actually as the downturn uh, back in 08, 09 took hold, actually a lot of that uh, was moved elsewhere and that really opened up the door for our Meadowbrook facility to become the first of lithium ion pr production here in North America. I think when it comes to expansion of, of battery production in, in North America, I think you're going to see a lot more of it coming here because, you know, you need local supply chains to be able to satisfy the need of our automaker customers in the future. So I do expect you'll see more lithium-based chemistry moving into the United States because ultimately a lot of our governments around the world want to protect that capability and I think you'll see a lot more investment coming to uh, the U.S. Clearly, over the last few years, things have definitely um, kind of reverted away from globalization. I think there's been more protectionistic things have been happening around the world. And so for us, what we do is we consume and produce in region. So one of the things that we're doing with our supply chain is making sure we have whatever technologies we need in those core regions to be able to satisfy our customer demands. Because we can't control what a government may do somewhere else in the world. So we want to make sure we've got our capabilities established in the regions that we uh, take care of our customers. We have such a core nucleus of knowledge here with our, our team that we're actually taking that and farming it out into other parts of the world. So as we mentioned here today, we actually produce all the cells that are being consumed in Germany and in China. We also did the process development. The equipment was built here in Holland, Michigan, and we exported that equipment uh, into Germany and into China as well. So we're going to keep that hub because it's an important place and not to uh, sacrifice or lose any of our key talent that we've developed here over several years. We've got a few critical things that we're really focused on uh, out of Milwaukee. One is continue to build up our software and electronics integration capabilities. As you think about vehicles continuing to advance, you know, the more we can provide turnkey solutions and help our automaker partners find the best uh, solution for their vehicle, the better partner we are for them. So going forward, you'll continue to see us investing with software and electronics when our, in our locations in Milwaukee. So we have our technical team, so engineering, we also have two test labs there, one for our uh, conventional lead acid technology as well as lithium is actually in Milwaukee. But we have purchasing quality, you know, my, me and my staff actually sit in Milwaukee as well, well over 550 employees there today. I can't think of anything that would stop Wisconsin from, you know, having a company like Clarios expand its uh, operations there. Um, the biggest thing we've been working with around the world is getting enough uh, technical resources on board uh, based upon our, our facilities we have around the globe. That's been a pretty big challenge, I think, for a lot of people in manufacturing, and it continues to be a challenge, I think, going forward uh, for the next five to ten years. What's it going to look like 10 years from now? Will you still have 500, 800 employees or what's your thought? Yeah, so I think what, what will transition is, you know, obviously to the higher tech, technology side. When I say high, higher tech, it's continued development of these advanced chemistries, continued uh, advancement of our smart AGM technology, which means we will need more software and integration capabilities. And that's where I see the biggest challenge and the biggest need that we would have in, in Milwaukee is making sure we can get those type of uh, engineers.